Hey everybody, hope you're doing well. Welcome back to another CSK News episode. Hope you guys all enjoyed your past weekend. I did it, I certainly did. I actually lost my voice, so many apologies. Not gonna be too many live streams or videos this week. First off, there's not too much CSK News, but second off, my voice needs to recover. Hope you can all understand. But welcome back to a very important episode where I share with all of you guys the current CSGO scams out there. The first one is not necessarily related to CSGO, it's kind of just a Steam scam in general. And the second one's a big one I want you guys to be aware of, and all the links will be down below for the things I do point out. But first, I want to share with all of you guys how a couple guys out there, a couple scammers, have made tens and tens of thousands of dollars and just in the past few months have been doing this for several several months and have made thousands of dollars from scamming people the CSGO community other games out there themselves and here's the main strategy actually the first one has been out there for a long time they actually buy bot accounts or bot comments on their profiles and make themselves look like reputable graphic designers or also artwork people where they go around to everyone and ask do you want artwork done do you want a banner a channel profile picture anything done for yourself and their main strategy is this they'll do the half now half later strategy where you pay them half the scan or half the fee up front and then once the artwork is done you pay the other half sometimes they actually get paid the full fee up front and they actually promise to be the artwork afterwards and what they do is pretty simple right they get your half payment or your full payment they take those skin transactions mainly they actually do transactions and skins those transactions cannot be traced just like many PayPal disputes out there if it's for a service that's virtual you really can't trace that back so steam can't do anything they can't get your skins back for you and that's why they have these mule accounts on screen I'll show you guys some of the many many items these guys have acquired over the past few months and over even probably the past year or so just from that one scam. Now you're probably wondering as well, some of those skins are thousands of dollars individually as well. A lot of those skins are hundreds of dollars each. Why would anyone pay that much money for artwork? Now here's the big scam they actually do. The artwork scam is one, but please watch out for this next one. My friend Sector and other people out there, I'll make the guy who actually gave this, my, this information to me, I'll make him anonymous because he's actually inside this whole ring of people that are scamming and he's trying to get more information for us. But as of right now, the biggest scam out there in CSGO are fish sites so please be aware there are so many scam websites out there that you sign in and you're, you're still safe but when you're on the website itself they're gonna have withdraw scams or, or make you deposit money to withdraw skins that's a very common type of scam but the newest one we've seen a lot now is phishing sites where even if you sign in you are in grave trouble and what they'll do is they'll try and mimic their website very close to popular websites I know one popular one that was actually active last week was skinjar.com that's a scam phishing site it's not skins jar which just came back recently it's skin jar so they go around and they'll actually make these phishing sites that are very close to popular websites out there and once you accidentally log in they have all your information especially even if you have authenticator they can actually somehow scam you as well and that's how they've actually scammed all those skins I'll show you more skins on screen and as of right now they have scammed countless numbers of money and skin and countless numbers of skins in general and they have made so much money from this so please be careful I've had so many DMs about these guys and especially an anonymous one coming to me and say Jake you got to expose them I'll link their mule accounts down below and you guys can do whatever whatever you want with that information if you guys please if you want to report them feel free to but those are the biggest CSGO scams I've seen as of right now and one last scam story for today as well I do want to talk about Gambit Gaming now I have my personal issues with Gambit Gaming many of you guys know I talked about their coach a long time ago who physically abused a lot of their academy members and Gambit Gaming came back to me and said don't worry Jake we'll come back and we'll release a story on this event eventually and they never did they never got back to us and that story is still out there I've talked to them I've talked to the academy members as well as the graphic designer for that team who got physically abused by their coach and Gambit has never said a thing about it but Gambit also has announced their newest gambling sponsor. Thanks to Caboose Echo on screen. I'll link his full video down below. But one of their main sponsors right now is actually a gambling website. Many uh, teams out there don't actually uh, interfere with gambling websites any longer, but we still do have Gambit Gaming doing this. I'm not going to blame them for that. Obviously, they're probably paying a good portion of money for that. And I do appreciate the fact they're going to probably be paying their players based off that income. But on top of that, their main sponsor is a gambling site known as Drop Gun, and they are very notoriously known as a scam site. I'll actually link the full video down below for all of you. But I kind of my warning out there for all of you I guess organizations or people what do you guys think about this what do you think about Gamut Gaming still being associated with a gambling sponsor now I know we still have so many gambling sponsors even like Hellcase has their own cup every now and again Daddy Skins had their own tournament I understand the motive for this because of course it does increase the scene it does pay the teams which is a good thing but what do you guys think about that and warning to Gamut Gaming are you guys going to respond to my story about your coach physically abusing the players you probably won't but feel free what you guys think about that they are actually sponsored by Dropgun who is a scam website a lot of people out there go and actually get their skins and they can never withdraw them. So please guys, I advise you not to use it. Now I've also wanna talk about this for a long time but I'm not really sure how to approach it. Many of you guys have seen this Reddit post, I'll link it down below as well, for a possible Overwatch investigator coin as well as in the description you guys can see after a certain amount of Overwatch investigations that are correctly proven, you actually get to upgrade your coin itself. And again, it's a great idea but here's the thing guys, we have had so many great ideas come to the discussion boards that Valve has never implemented and so many things have gotten way, many, way, way, way more upvotes than this has. I'll link this post down below 
down below on the Steam forums for all of you guys to go and upvote it. I think it's a great thing to see other coins and medals out there because we have Valve reusing operation medals out there uh, for all the teams who have seen those operation medals reused time and time again. Hopefully this will be a nice installation of a brand new medal, especially for all you people out there who have the Overwatch ability but don't really like to use it. This would be a great thing to do as you guys can see the tiers there, 50, 100, eventually 500 Overwatch investigations and you get to upgrade your coin all the while. I think it would be a great I think it'd be a great item to actually have in the game. Do I think Valve will ever do it? Not for a long time. And very last in today's episode of CSK News, some roster change news for all of you Godsent fans out there. Technically replacing Pronax on that roster as he did step down a couple weeks ago. They now have Freddie B from Epsilon joining the team as their newest IGL. Will this be the end of the Swedish Shuffles? We really can't tell, but there's our full new roster for you guys on screen. As yes, Freddie B joins in from Epsilon and he will be their new in-game leader for that team. Kind of an underwhelming lineup as of right now. We'll see how they do in their next big tournament because we have not seen Godsent play at a major event in a long time now. So we're going to see how they actually return to the scene. On top of that though, very briefly touching on Epsilon. What do you guys think about them possibly becoming one of the better build teams out there? What I mean by build team is a team that's sending off players to other organizations and making money that way instead. Although I do feel bad because I think they had a roster at one point that could have had some minor success. They've now sent off Draken and Rez, both NIP, and now Freddie B being their third major player going to a tier one team as he joins up with Godsend. Okay, you guys are going to mad at me for saying tier one, but either way, one of the better build teams out there. It was formerly, I think, in the Danish scene, we had like teams like Heroic or teams like Trick Esports really building players up and now Epsilon definitely joins that list. On top of that, some brief updates for all of you guys who did watch DreamHack Malmo. Spoilers, we had G2 take that tournament. Some quick thoughts for all of you. I think we had a lot of surprise teams. Of course, over half the teams there had brand new rosters. G2 though did take the tournament, sweeping North in the finals, but if any of you guys want to know my opinion, I think North had the most impressive run of anyone beating teams like Cloud9, SK, sweeping other teams like Gambit as well. On top of that, they also swept teams like I think they also beat as teams like Immortals, but on top of that, for all you North American fans out there, Cloud9 still struggling. That roster, of course, needs some time. They actually faced off against SK, were swept by them to get out of group stages. SK, kind of a, a stumbling tournament there. I still think they're one of your better teams in the world, but it's such a great tournament to watch as well because so many big upsets. Virtus Pro coming out of nowhere. Of, of many of you guys know they're not ESL Pro League, so not too big of a showing. They went 0 2 alongside Envious and Mouse Sports. Mouse Sports, also a newer lineup. Envious, one of those struggling lineups that I think maybe the lower French scene might have some kind of shuffle there. Maybe Kiyoshima comes in and joins Team Envious. But on top of that, though, we had some other great performances like Gambit and they're having their one of their newest members Fitch. Statistically he was their best player. Who knows? I think it's kind of cool to see the iconic performance of an IGL. Many of you guys know taking on the IGL role can really affect your stats and Adren has become a kind of that prime example of that once or I guess a few weeks ago the best CIS member of that roster of any CIS team and now you can see his stats certainly fading as he does take the IGL role. He takes the weight of that role. Either way though DreamHack Mamo was amazing to watch. So many great upsets. I cannot wait till next tournament to see what teams actually finalize their movements, their strategies, and what teams can actually show up and finalize those rosters that are still kind of new. So, hope you guys all enjoyed this episode of CSK News. I will see you guys in a couple days with more CSK News. Hope you all enjoyed, and uh, yeah, that is it. I will uh, go rest my voice. See ya!